Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chris from Solstice ATR. You can find us on the website, on Axel, Twitter, Instagram, as well as Discord. Remember, there's a lot of imitators out there trying to imitate us on Discord or Twitter. Pay attention to those scammers out there. We're not a broker dealer. Our past performance doesn't give us any indication of our future results. Use at your own risk and data may not be copied unless it is requested from us by the website and getting in contact with us. Let's first talk about Happy President's Day. First chart, here you go. Happy President's Day from all of us. Remember to check us out. This is our website. This is our contact. Let's go to the first slide up here. And what I did, I put a 10-year, the VIX. The reason why this is the fear and greed factor, every time we had a spike, we had a market correction, we are reaching a bottom on the VIX. You can see we are in compression down here on the last... If I take the last three years after the 2020 COVID-19 to March 23rd, we can see that every time we did a spike, we came back down, spike came back down. We're reaching this bottom start to buy, look for insurance for protecting your assets because we are going on a couple of stocks in the stock market. They are part of the fangs such as Apple, Amazon, Google, Netflix, Tesla, Navida, and so on. The most important thing I want you to pay attention to the VIX in relationship in case we get a spike back up and something goes up in the VIX on the daily chart spiking above the 50 and 18 SMA and clearing the 89 and clearing the 15 area 17 going back towards the 20 because the volatility has picked up in the last week and I can show you on the daily chart we are due for a bill depth in March as well, you know, pay attention to what the Fed's Federal Reserve are doing. We almost hit 18. You see that spike up. Then we reset back down. Pay attention to this fix if it consolidates here and jumps back up. Let's go to the first line. It's okay, the tech sector on the daily. You can see it spiked up. And after we spiked up on Monday, this was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're coming back down. Does it create a shoulder? Does it create, this is a head. This is a, sh uh, this is, I mean, shoulder. This is the head. Does it create another shoulder here before continuing lower? And I can show you on the weekly how it looks like. This is an engulfing candle on the tax sector in XLK. Take a look at the Fibonacci's from last year's high to last year's low. We are above the 100%. We did not reach the 123 Fib extension at all. So pay attention to what the market offers you. Let's go now and look at the NYA New York Composite. In the New York Composite, you can see we came out of a symmetrical. This was our prior year's high to the prior year's low in March. We had that double bottom almost on 1023. We reversed back and we cleared that downtrend channel. We consolidated for a week, pushed up, closed up here the year. We came back in. The second week of January on the 15th, we rallied up and broke up. Pay attention to this candle as well on the New York composite because this represents the overall the composite on the New York Stock Exchange. Let's go now take a look at the IWM or the IWN small cap. We can see last year's high here, last year's low here. We are doing a cup. If this is considered a W, is this a cup, the V shape and a cup for a breakout to clear this area? Or do we get back to this backside of this channel and fall back in? The small cap and mid cap are acting a little bit much better than the overall market. And I want to use the SPY here. The new, uh, oops, SPY, wrong, wrong symbol. The, this is the S&P 500, the ETF from Spiders. You can see on the weekly chart, we are coming to that uptrend channel we are continuing on a very high uh, slopey area we are away from the 18 sma the 50 and the 89 to 116 sma and the 200 you can see the fibonacci resistance and support we broke out of this and we continued higher and we cleared the prior year's high which is the 478 98 let's call it 4 480 if we end up coming below that 480 area, pay attention to it in case it creates a V shape, come back up and come back further down. I'll look at it on the daily chart. We are seeing that the RSI is in an uptrend and trying now to break down that downtrend channel. We use the RSI extreme 80 or 20 or 85 
15, 38%, 61.8, and 50%, like using a Fibonacci here. You can see it. This will tell you a little bit more about the momentum in the market. And you can see we are coming out of a wedge. We looked in. We have this gap up here. You can see it. We continued higher. We consolidated. We broke up. We consolidated, broke up, fell back in. And on Friday, we sold off on Friday. Pay attention to the prior week's candle in relationship to this one. Do we fall below the 18 SMA on the daily chart and that wedge? In order to continue lower, does it create an M shape or do we get one more time breakout in the SPY? Let's go and I show you um, last week's what I did. This was the prior week's range. This was uh, Monday. If you take a look at the Friday through the prior week's range on a measured move, I want to show you this, how it operates. We can take this last week's range. We can reactivate it. You can see this is the last five days range. We looked above. We tried to, we came back 100% of the move, bounced off, back up, then we fell off on Friday. If I activate this measured move, activate the properties, we'll go to the Monday's high and the Tuesday's low. And we basically get the measured move for the, the, the following week if we break up to continue up to the 180, 200% or do we fall down below the 50 coming back to the 20 zero line or coming back to the 80 minus 100 area. So that's on the SPY. Let's do it on New York's micro and Q. I'll use the micro and Q instead of the S&P because I wanted to show this on the daily chart where we broke out of, we consolidated, zigzag, broke up. We do have this area where do we have a small little gap in here. We got one, two, three. I kind of didn't want to put a straight line through it. I put those ovals here in the prior week's ranges and I put the linear regression uptrend. We are in a wedge. You can see that we tested this wedge. We bounced off. We fell through it. We are testing on the 18 SMA on the daily the measured move. The most important thing is to pay attention to that 50 SMA if it holds us to get another bounce back or do we reverse back up. We are inside the middle range of those two linear regression channels. If I duplicate this channel and I draw another one, this is what we call linear regression channels on TOS, on uh, CQG, on any platform that you use. It kind of gives you an idea if you are in the range, above the range, I should have done it this way. I should have escaped. Let's do it this way so everyone can see it. I'm trying to kind of give you a mirror image of the 100%, the zero line, and the 50%. We have broken that line. Pay attention to it in relationship to the move. And if I go to a four-hour chart um, time frame, if I go intraday and we do... 15 days, four hour chart. And the reason behind it, I want to show you the overnight action in relationship to last week's range on the NASDAQ because it was a little bit weaker. You can see that consolidation. We broke up. Then we tested this area of consolidation in the overnight in this big candle. We couldn't hold it. We fell further down to the backside of this channel. The most important thing, does this support here, this consolidation here and here, does it get us to continue back up or do we fall back down to the bottom of this range so what i want to do this is what friday this is thursday this is wednesday this is tuesday on the gap and this is monday's high and this was the friday's high so what i do in order to measure it i go get the measuring tool we grab the high from here to the slow here and we got the weekly ranges if we test the 20 percent and zero and bounce off that would be great if we fall through it Look for the backside of the 50 to 200 and the 250 SMA on the charts for the coming week. And if we reverse back up and clear F3 or the 50% range and coming back up, that would be much better for the market. But if we don't pay attention to what the market offers us, the RSI keeps us in line. If the trend is up or do we reverse back, do we find that the 38.2 Fib holds us to come back to the 50 and 61 or do we fall through back to the 20 and 15 area in the RSI? I hope this video was very helpful. If you like, check us out on the website, get in contact with us, give us smash your, smash the like button, comment, on YouTube, the weekly video is for free. Enjoy your President's Day, and I'll see you guys on 